Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the East Meets West Hunt podcast presented by Onyx. The Onyx Hunt app is your premier GPS hunting app. Turns your mobile phone into a fully functioning working GPS. The Onyx Hunt app will work with or without cell service. So you can download the maps ahead of time, which now is a lot faster than it's ever been, and be able to take it out into the field turn your phone on airplane mode save your battery and go out and just hunt and know that you're going to be able to find your way back be able to mark all your waypoints strategize plan everything is within the onyx hunt app so if you head over to onyxmaps.com and use the coupon code emw that'll save yourself 20 percent off of the app tetherednation.com so tethered has been developing for the last few years the, the lightest weight, safest, elevated hunting gear, essentially, on the planet. And they're doing that mostly for the saddle hunting community, but are even starting to expand a little bit from there. So now they have a bunch of different types of, of saddles out there, including the Menace, the Phantom, which is what I use. I, I like the Phantom a lot. It's got a ton of different adjustments, comfort adjustments. You can buy the kit, so it shows you step-by-step step all the stuff you need so you're not trying to piece it together. And more importantly, over at tetherednation.com, they have a bunch of resources to teach you about saddle hunting and see if it's right for you. So head over there to check that out. The University of Elk Hunting. So Corey Jacobson and Elk 101 have put together the most fully comprehensive elk hunting learning course available. And... He's doing that through years and years of knowledge from himself and everybody else that uh, has put some time and effort into this course. So whether it's right now, which you should be kind of in the planning phases if you want to start doing an elk hunt next year, be able to plan all of that out and go through, start working out, getting your gear ready, piecing that together. All that information is there in the course. And then more importantly, it talks you through how to actually hunt them, how to e-scout, how to go through and call elk, how to understand the elk behavior, and everything in between. It's all there in one course. So if you head over to elk101.com, click on the University of Elk Hunting, and if you use the coupon code East Meets West, you'll save yourself 20% off of the online course. So check that out. All right. So I am going to share a uh, Mountain Buck Monday story coming to you on a Tuesday. And this one is from Cody Redinger. So Cody shot an absolutely incredible buck back in October in Pennsylvania. And this is his story on the deer. When I was messaging him, he goes, I actually found this spot this past spring and just knew it had to hold big deer. Where he called home was just so thick with pines and deadfall. I don't even know how he could move in there. I had him on camera in August, and then he disappeared until October 18th. He came in and scraped on a southwest wind in the evening. Then the next day was October 22nd, which he came in on a west wind in the evening. So I knew he was going to come back to that scrape soon enough again. So I hunted the 26th in the evening and didn't see anything. But then the 27th had a west wind, and sure enough... He came in on it. He came in towards the scrape and picked me off. We stared at each other for what seemed like an eternity. And then he started to make his way downwind to me. And I knew I had to take the shot. It was now or never. He was going to bust me. So I had to take a super hard quarter and two shot. The knock buried in him. And there was no blood trail whatsoever. My heart sank so bad. But I just backed out. And it was good I did to the next morning because he wasn't more than 50 yards from where, I, where he last stood. And it is just an incredible deer. So if you want to see photos of this deer, head over to my Instagram, which is at East Meets West Hunt. Um, over on Facebook, East Meets West Outdoors. And I'll share a photo of Cody's buck and to be able to see it. Just an incredible deer. Super pumped for him. He's been a longtime listener of the podcast. And he's been working at it really really hard so i uh 
I really like to congratulate Cody on this and and I'm hoping I got a whole bunch of Mountain Buck Monday stories that have been shared with me here. So continue to send them in. I'll get through all of them eventually. And uh, it's just it's pretty inspiring to to hear that. So on this episode, I am joined by my dad, Joe Martonic, and my good buddy, a past guest, hunting partner, friend, whatever you want to call him, Johnny Stewart. And uh, we're going to talk all about the entire full behind the scenes story of my buck um, that I I shot here a couple weeks ago or about a little over a week ago in rifle season in Pennsylvania, as well as um, talk about both my dad's hunting season to date and and Johnny's and kind of some of the struggles, some of the successes, some things they've learned, what they've learned about hunting a specific deer. There's a lot to the story, and um, I think that uh, you'll really enjoy it if you're able to check it out there. So um, got some, you know, bunch more mountain buck stuff to come um, and more whitetail stuff, but I'm going to start focusing back a little bit more on some Western hunting stuff uh, to get everybody ready for draw applications. Um, draw applications are coming up here beginning in January, and I think I'll do a whole podcast just surrounding that and just kind of get you ready uh, what to expect as you're coming into 2021 and planning out your season so that you can find those dream opportunities that you've been looking for. So we'll um, we'll dive into that a little bit here in uh, the coming weeks. But for now, enjoy this story. I hope you like it. And take care. Have a good rest of your week. All right. We're live. Sitting here with across the bar from my dad, Joe Martonic. Mountain man, Joe. How's it going, everybody? And Johnny Stewart. What's going on, Johnny? Oh, not much, Bo. I'm doing pretty good after that dinner your mom cooked. Yeah, that was uh, some back straps. What, what was in the, all in that, Dad? Uh, I'm not sure what she stuffed it with, but she took a back strap. We uh, butterflied it and stuffed it and wrapped it in bacon and cooked it on the Traeger. Yeah. That, that was definitely a good meal. <laughs> yeah. Good thing we had a good provider. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, well, I Bo. I had to feed the dogs. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to feed the dogs, you guys here. So yeah, that was a good dinner. <laughs> yeah, it was. Doing a little talking about deer hunting planning for tomorrow. Now my dad's still gonna be the dog, but now I'm I'm playing Johnny's role. Two here. dogs. Yeah. I'm not used to having two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> See if we I just hope you don't put us down if we don't perform. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna try. We're gonna we gotta help the needy. Yeah, that's good. I uh, had a couple <laughs> spots in mind that maybe we'll get one out. What are you thinking? I mean, what what uh, what's kind of your plan? I got a hollow. Uh, it's not as big uh, as what where your deer was, where Joe pushed. But I think. Um, Maybe each of you go down each side, and I'll be waiting. Yeah. That. I mean, not much to it. Um, I didn't see a lot of people parked there, and I went in there this evening, just kind of sat for an hour, and I didn't see it. There's still a little snow left, and I didn't see many tracks. I've seen uh, people tracks. I've seen some deer tracks, and it's a spot that I always find sheds down in the bottom of a hollow. Um, I scratch in a ferns or some hemlocks, and seems like even um the end of rifle there's um some bucks in there so it's kind of a spot i think um there'll be some bucks in there so yeah just trying kind of trying to find the spots where people aren't hanging the out people at. aren't and i actually found a shed in there last year off a of decent i'd say there's a buck in that hollow yeah now whether he's going to come by me there's a road, it parallels a road for about two miles a straight away on a road, and then the hollow drops off to one side. It's probably, I'd say it's probably 500 yards down, and it's just a, just parallels that road, a nice hollow, or some hemlock, some thick beach brush, and um, there's a road on the other top of the other side, so they've got the highway, 
hollow kind of parallels down to a creek and another hillside back up to the road on top and i think and i think the bucks are going to probably stay down low so you and your dad can start upstream and i think we'll be all right with the south wind southwest and yeah see if they come to me i'm pretty sure i know what you're talking about you don't mind if i check some of my cameras well yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. and if it isn't you don't mind if i drop a couple like i know you're going to like last week that's all right yeah (laughs) yeah i know how that goes i said bo and dad should shouldn't be that long he's out there putting cameras (laughs) in my spot yeah oh so i guess before we get in that story there John, how's your season been going to this point? It's been going all right. Um, I haven't killed anything, but it's... You've been helping a lot I've been of helping, other people. But it, like me and Joe talked about it, you shoot enough and you enjoy it, you get older. It's like, I, I'm not trying to prove anything. I've, uh, I like seeing Bo get his deer and my other buddies get a deer and have success. And it's all about the camaraderie and having your buddies. I do a lot of hunting myself, but get a couple guys together and hunt. It's like, now if there was a 175 inch deer back here, Bo, I wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have been back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a different story. Cause my goal was to shoot 170 on public land. That, that was a call day. buck. That was a call. That buck was a call buck. Yeah. Get, <laughs> I had to get him out of there because was he wasn't couple, getting any bigger. There was a couple up in commerce. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it was a call buck back there, but <laughs> oh. had to get him out of the way so them jeans can really sprout back there, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Let so what's, what's ones... been going on with, with your season then? I know you've had some some close encounters, haven't you? Yeah, not as many as you, Bo. I did have one good chance. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if I called it. Usually you get one chance a year at a buck. Yeah. I don't know if I want to call it a chance, but November 2nd when that snow was down, um, I went into a spot where I was hunting a big eight, old, probably seven, eight year old, mid high forties, eight. And uh, I got in a tree and before daylight and here come a doe popping out and he was right behind her. And I, I thought he was done for, um, but the wind shifted a little swirl and hit him in the face he snorted and took off and i actually had a hawk 10 yards from so i don't i'm wanting to ho- hope and say that yeah the hawk spooked him he was with that doe but he probably caught a whiff of me yeah but that was um november 2nd and actually greg litzinger was out that week um and uh he had hit one actually where Bo um shot his deer we put him in a tree and uh he hit one. We never found it. It was uh, took a step when he shot at twenty yards. Hit him in the liver, and yeah, it went to it went to lunge after a doe. Yeah, the yeah. doe was there, and yeah, you were up there that night. We hiked that night. At first, there was good blood, fifty yards, and petered out to nothing, huh? Yeah, and, uh, that's when I dropped those couple cameras and yeah, started cameras, picking up that big knife. Calling your dad, hey, I got a good spot here, Joe. And when Joe <laughs> pushed it, he checked the camera. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> so. Greg redeemed himself. We went to another spot and he shot a good deer. Um, he hunts hard. I like hard hunting with him. He's that's the biggest thing. Having a good work ethic hunting. It's tough hunting. And, uh, he don't have the time to, to be out here. He got about four or five days. So I was happy. He got a shot at one. And, um, another buddy of mine came up and hunted with me for a day and he shot a 10, yeah, I saw, first I saw day, that. First <laughs> day, Robbie shot one. And so I spent half my season dragging and scouting. <laughs> <laughs> There's just people out there that appreciate But it. like I, yeah, they appreciate But I mean, it's them call bucks, like you said, Joe, trying to get them out, thin them out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like I said, if I ever was 170, it'd be like, eh. You like this late season anyways. Yeah, late right? season. I was out, you know, so uh, that was November and headed down Ohio first day of gun um it's been about two three days i actually it was rare to have some snow out in that area i track i did some tracking i jumped a big one and uh you know i passed on you know 120 inch 10 there the last day and so every hunting season's good i mean as long as you're not working i mean whether you kill something or not and i always say if you don't kill nothing it's you get to hunt all year yeah. 
but uh, so that was mainly my season. And it, you know, tomorrow's the last day of PA. I, I come back up to um, drop some cameras I did today, and um, in case my dogs don't put one by me tomorrow, I'll put them down and I'll have to go stand hunt. You know, after Christmas, muzzle out or bows. <laughs> yeah. I'll put some bow drives on for you. Yeah, then we're, then we're that you well, never know. Yeah, when I'm shed hunting that area, I can push it. Hey, through. we did that one year in Ohio. I said you got it was because you can go hunt till February. Yeah, I said we got tags. You guys shed hunt. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I was down. Bow was yeah. yeah, I was there for that. Yeah, yeah. that was funny. It, it, it didn't feel like it was still hunting season. Wasn't it warm? It was. Yeah, it was like almost seventy degrees in February. It was like the. I don't know, end of January, beginning of February, something, southern Ohio. You're still walking around with your bow, and we're yeah. shed hunting. It felt shed weird. Shed hunting. Hey, bow, let's slow down a little bit. I don't know He's, if Johnny ever puts his bow down. I don't. <laughs> I think he carries it all year. That's what I said. That's the only good thing about not tagging a deer is I get to hunt all through the whole season, but it, it uh, hurts my pocketbook. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because you're, you're off work. I'm, yeah, I'm not making, but I'm, I have, I have issues i'm a, I'm a, like i i'm gonna spend all this money you know i'm gonna start when i get back to work i'm gonna be in a hole but i'm like <laughs> i had to hunt because i got problems but uh <laughs> yeah. So. yeah so so you got one more day here in, in pa and then are you gonna go back down to ohio or anything else or what um iowa you iowa go i got a there. late season tag so I'm going to go out before Christmas, drop a bunch of cameras because it's after gun season and maybe hunt a day, but just mainly drop a pile of cameras, head back home for Christmas, then back out there maybe January. <clears throat> Same thing, they kind of get calmed down, I think, after all the gun season. If you've got some cold weather, they got to feed. So I usually have a chance at one. Yeah, you normally come back with something out there. And you're like, you know, everyone talks about drawing every four or five years in Iowa. You seem to get a tag almost every year. I, this is my fourth or fifth year in a row. I'm actually hoping one year I don't draw so I don't have to go out there every January because <laughs> I got to go out there and I got an Ohio and PA tag still in my pocket. It's like three states. So, um, <laughs> but I got to go out there. But yeah. it's like, it just kind of puts a lot of stress on me. You got three tags, and my old lady's like, when are you going to get us some deer meat? It's like <laughs> everybody else gets deer but you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. And, so. and uh, Dad, you, uh, you're, you've you been done for quite a while now. Yeah, I think I, I tagged out, what, November 9th? Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was, a, it was a long, it was a long season, even though not as long as what you guys had gone through. <laughs> um but uh, no, I had uh, a lot of—I would say a lot of activity early on. But uh, there was definitely some, you know, a few days where I didn't see a deer. But uh, I think it was the third week of October. I passed on a decent ten that thought probably a regret, and I mean it's actually bigger than one I ended up taking, uh, which was an eight point, uh, and then. Um, Later on, I had a couple of encounters with some uh, pretty pretty good bucks, but uh, um, yeah, it was it was a uh, a longer long season as far as uh, the you know with the, the not expect getting the, not getting the activity that I expected to see um, or was hoping to see anyways. Um, you know, I I'd, I would say this past year had a decent antler growth with the the winter we had the year before um it seemed like uh you know there was definitely some larger antlers out there and i was hoping to hold out for one of them and um so like i said passed up on some opportunities earlier that maybe other years i would normally have taken uh the day i did shoot mine i had sat up on a uh, hemlock scrape in a creek bottom because that was when it was warm out. I think it was. I think it got close to seventy that day. Yeah, I think it was. It was over seventy that day. Yeah, I hunted in the morning. Um, didn't have any activity or any action, and I d just went back to the truck. Ended up relocating. I think I texted. I, I didn't have service in the morning, but I think I texted you when I got service and told you where I was going to head down this bottom uh, creek bottom. I figured it got to be cool. That's probably where we're going to at least hang out 
So I headed down there and uh, set up on this grape. And it's a, it's a very uh, closed up area as far as uh, being able to see. I can only see 18 yards in front of me. I mean, my shot's going to be between 12 and 18 yards. Wow. And the opening's only maybe 20 yards wide. And uh, so it, you got to be on your toes. And they, you know, in the past when I see bucks there or deer come through, it's like you see them, you don't hear them because it's so quiet with the, the, you know, the hemlocks. They yep. don't. You, and then the crick flowing. Yeah, the and there's there a crick too. in the background going. And uh, that makes for a long day. You're like, oh, you're on that. always looking this yep. way. That you got to be ready. Is that yep. is that the one that you climb the branches up to? No, no, that, okay. that was the one I was in in the morning. Okay. <laughs> now this one I actually have sticks going up to, but uh, I'm sitting there and it was. I think I got in the stand around two uh, thirty, and I did. I do some blind calling there because you can't really see. So you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, so it was probably getting close to three thirty, and I just did a grunt sequence and all of a sudden i hear tink 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 i could hear tines going off branches Ooh. and i just went to full draw <laughs> i didn't know if there was a chase going on or if it was coming into my grunts yeah. and it come popping out in the opening i had a side view of it and it looked had a good friend i'd pulled the card before i got in the stand and there was a good eight point in there that was probably 18 inches wide and uh a couple other bucks that were uh you know about that caliber and uh I didn't know which one he was, and I just got a side view of him, and soon as I stopped him, and I just drilled him. And, uh, you know, you get up to him, it's like you already had a little bit of ground shrinkage. <laughs> 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 but it was definitely, uh, I mean, I, I was very, very happy with it. Uh, I, I would do it all over again. Um, I mean, but, uh, yeah, it was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a longer season than. Yeah, the weather wasn't great. No. Now, did you, like, through that, you shot yours on a ninth, Joe, how was your rut activity through November? Uh, I had some action. I mean, not as not as much as I was hoping to get. And like I said, I had days where I sat. I'd say, you know, I, I did probably, I bet you, seven, eight all-day sets yeah. up until this point in time. Uh, nothing straight in a row, but uh, where I didn't see a deer. Yeah, me too. And uh, then there was other days where, you know, you, you, like I said, I passed on the 10, and I think it was the third week of October um, that any other year I probably would have drilled yeah. or at least shot at. <laughs> but well, uh, I, I think I think that the thing is when you're when you're hunting some of those those deer and you're hunting those spots where other people aren't, you're in such thick stuff a lot of times. You don't you can't see very far and there could be deer you know you could be walking 80 yards from you those days you weren't seeing any deer and you wouldn't even know it yeah, yeah. you know but you have a good chance that at some point if you're, you're patient enough that one of those big ones are you know could come through well actually that morning i didn't see a buck but i heard a chase go on and this thing did everything from grunting to roaring and popping and just carrying on just out of sight and i could not pull him off that doe and i could hear it crossing the creek a couple times and uh it was just unreal it was real deep so i knew it was a good buck had to be a mature buck but i could not pull him off of that doe uh to get to get even get lay lay eyes on him but that was probably well i had relocated i was probably maybe two miles down the creek where i end up shooting this one uh which I I filmed the same deer in, on both of the scrapes, um, so definitely within the realm of possibility of that one making it down there. But but yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, I, I yeah, it was it was it was a it was a a decent year. Um, learned a lot. Um, ran a lot of cameras. Uh, picked them up here right before bear season and uh, got a lot of intel for next year. You got more. You got any more cameras out, Joe? Or yeah, I left. I uh, left about a half dozen out. So you got any? You got. That's what I always want to know. Is but what you got on a radar? You got some big ones for next year on a radar. Yeah, I got. A, I got a couple out there that uh, I'm hoping What's to make big it through. For Joe, like yeah, fifty, one fifty. Well, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, I don't. No, I. I mean, I. I might have one at in the mid one forties at. Uh, I didn't have any super bucks this, this year on film. Yeah. I mean, I, but, you know, it's, it's, 
you know, some of those sheds we were looking at here prior to getting on the, the, oh, yeah. the podcast. I mean, that's once every 10, 15 years uh -huh. I get a buck of that caliber in the areas that I hunt. Um, you know, just browse bucks. Uh, yeah. The age, though, I mean, you know, like that one uh, probably died of old age. Um, but, uh, no, I, I, I mean, I got some in, uh, hopefully they make through that, you know, upper 120s to uh mid 140s but um some old old deer yeah yeah i've been filming them uh four or five years now i got sheds from some of them for about that many years hey do they like them deer that do you find them older deer do they kind of stick to the same area as far as home, uh, not home range but where they because i know the couple bucks that i up here would film um maybe they were four or five i'd, I'd catch them and Oh, I'm going to catch him here next year. Never see him. And like this, the particular eight that I had under me um, in archery season, I couldn't get a shot. He caught a whiff of me. I had him uh, half a mile away. I'm thinking at four, a couple of years ago, four years old. And I, uh, I know he made it through. I said, well, I'll just on here next year. I'm, I'm going to smoke him. He disappeared. And then uh, two years later, I pick him up. That was like three or four years pick him up in his creek but now he's kind of staying at seven eight years old staying in the same place i think at that age but i find like four or five three-year-old bucks i'll catch him like, oh, next year and then they disappear i think they keep moving around or something you know what i mean there's them old bucks that yeah. you're getting you thinking that they're going to be you're like oh he'll be hitting his scraper he'll be here next year well i think they i think sometimes they get pushed out of the area and i don't film them for a while like you're saying and then yeah. they might pop back up a couple years later um i had a buck that uh his home range was probably over the, in the years i was filming about four or five miles you know as far as um uh, where he had moved to um the, it's not uncommon though where i might film a buck during the summer and i don't pick him when i start picking him up on scrapes it's a mile and a half two miles away yeah and he seems to stay in that stays area stays in that area and i don't get him no more where you in the summer where mm -hmm. i had him in those areas um so but uh i mean they're, they 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 definitely can travel i mean i was telling you that story you know m many years ago the one got killed six and a half miles from where i was filming it and uh that was as a crow's flies i mean yeah, i don't know how he, yeah. which path he took or what he did to get there but well when bo game. got his i showed you a picture of that one i had on mm -hmm. he's probably 170 10 point this summer mineral lick he'd been there for three years and joe i don't know where he goes <laughs> you know and like i'm that's still you know it's still yeah. in the back of your head that one's still like jabbing you on the side like ah you know you're over here hunting this deer like oh man <laughs> this deer's you know just knowing that he's alive and he's out there but you can't if i draw six you know six mile radius square you know around where i got him like man i'll never hunt i'll just be you know yeah uh, there was one i was hunting here oh probably maybe around 2008 2009 actually longer than that all the sheds are those are all sheds from the same buck and uh you know, I had five years worth of sheds. Wow. And I I had, I bet you, a dozen cameras within a one-mile radius on all these different scrapes. And I only picked them up on two scrapes. Yeah. That was it. Uh-huh. And uh, I never laid eyes on them. I actually killed them four different times, but it was the wrong deer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, I mean, that, it, you know, you know, Bo's was... T talking about how he targeted one deer this year and and yeah you get you can get caught up in that i won't say it's a rut but it, it kind of is because uh if you end up shooting the wrong deer there's actually some disappointment at first comes across you mm -hmm. and but then it's like kind of relief like okay it's it's over we'll, we'll try again next year yeah <laughs> <laughs> well like i had a the deer bow god i had him on it i put it on a scrape he was big scrape on that point, and um, I think October into November he he wasn't on there much. He hit that scrape, and I put Greg in there, and he hit the one that we you know we couldn't find it, and that was early November. And I'm talking four or five weeks go by. I don't get that 
Bo's buck on camera. I said, Greg, I call him up. You sure you didn't hit that big buck with them big long brow tines? I said, because he ain't on my camera anymore, you know, but he just quit hitting that scrape. He was living there. He was, he was, I bet he was bedded with two, 300 yards from that scrape. Just, he just didn't hit it. Yeah. I had a ton of different bucks on it, but he just come through a couple times early October, November, but just. Well, this is the first year that I've ever really clustered cameras in one spot when I started hunting that specific deer. It was like, I, I have 11 cameras. I had almost every single topography line you could think of coming down yeah, one side of the it. mountain up the other and wrapped around and out of all those cameras he hit five of the 11 but he only hit two more than once mm -hmm. and, and like so like, he was there but it was just i don't know it, it's just it's crazy to me how they how well, they do that but the thing is like so i had that many cameras if i didn't have them in those two of those spots i would never known he was there or mm -hmm. maybe thought he didn't live anywhere near there but it's it's just it's weird and i think people try to i talked to that one guy and i forget there was a study uh on deer and people try to figure out the science of scrapes and what they do and even some of my conclusions is that there is no science. Maybe you don't feel like scraping. Maybe you don't feel like smelling another. I don't know. It's just like sometimes my philosophy on rubs. I know back in the day when I was younger, I hunt a big rubber. Uh, there, man, he got this spot rubbed up. It's, you know, 10 rubs and, you know, a hundred square foot area or something. I'm going to hunt here. And I hunted rubs so many years, you know, maybe they were, um, I thought my thinking was like, oh, this is his area. He owns it. He's coming here. But I think in the last eight, ten years, when I run trail cameras on places I'd find this cluster of rubs. I put a camera out, and I never get a buck even come through, you know, the one that made it. It's just like, and I said, you know what? What if he, you know, you're getting October's testosterone's up. What if he, you know, the light, you know, the light that they need to, Makes his testosterone jump up. Maybe he's just aggravated and he just wants to rub, it, rub trees like to get some aggravation on that. He might never even come back there. That just might be like a spur of the moment. Maybe he sees another buck or a doe and he, maybe he gets horny or maybe he wants to fight a buck and he just rubs a bunch of trees to show some dominance. And maybe it was just a place that he walked through. He's name in his home range or something like you yeah. can put a lot of, you know, time into hunting rubs when he might have just been um pissed off and rubbed a couple trees in that whole area and then that's that you know well you, you and then when you go through your photos and i mean you might have this good buck on there and it's once every two and a half three weeks mm -hmm. you know what's the chances of you being there the yeah. next time he comes through mm -hmm. so there's a lot a lot of yeah you, you you don't there's a lot i try to focus on like does and cover a I yeah. think a big yeah. rub will tell you that a deer's there as far as, you know, I'm not saying the deer won't have a rub line or something like that, but uh, I know even some of these rubs that I find are, uh, I find them in areas, some big rubs in areas that I feel like that buck, um, I feel like if he's in an area, say he spends a lot of time in this area, so his scent's there and all the other deer smell him, see him, he's here, uh, I feel like he don't have to rub a lot because a lot of time you find where a bed now you might not be rubs because he's there sense there they could see him so I feel like some of these rubs that he puts he stages in areas that he's not there a lot so he's trying to trying to say that hey this is my territory I'm rubbing it up I'm putting my scent here I'm yeah. claiming this he, and he's not physically there so he puts his sign there to say I'm here he might come through there once during a rut but it might be just like him trying to like scare off the other deer and trying to claim that because let them know that I'm going to be back soon yeah or later. I'm, I'm coming back Stay out. <laughs> yeah I found some other spots that these big bucks I feel like I find them rubs big rubs but it's where a lot of hunters are maybe a good spot where some does and and I run cameras on these big rubs, and and he, um, I feel like he makes them just to let them, the younger deer, know that hey, I'm still the man here. There's my scent. That's my rub. But mm -hmm. it might be a spot that a lot of hunters hit, and he won't even go there. But he comes in and puts them rubs there and say, I'm still the king here. Yeah. Just to let you know that. <clears throat> and I, I did that this year. I found a cluster of them rubs. I found a shed season. I put the camera on them rubs, and 
uh, I never got the deer that made the um, rubs. I still never got them. I don't think he, he and he, I mean, he ordered, he's, he was easy, 140 inch or plus, just the size of the rubs. But I got a guy on my camera. He's standing the rubs. He looks up. I'm like, what the hell is he looking at? And I looked, he hunted in a tree right there above my camera. Did he really? He seen it, but, you know, and that's the typical. Uh-huh. Go hunt them rubs because there's a sign, but yep. that doesn't mean that buck's well, coming back. You know, and, and there is, uh, I, I guess, a little different side of that. Like this year, I I've never hung a camera on rubs before until I found this old signpost rub. It looked like it's been hit year after year. And I took that forehead gland stuff I spray on the scrape branch. The 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 the, the BF uh what BF gland yeah the the, the synth, yeah well it's, it's buck fever synthetic yeah it's buck fever yeah the forehead gl- the forehead gland so I'd spray that on the yeah. rub and I send you the video of that buck just shredding it no I didn't uh-uh. that's one of those big tens just absolutely going up is that right and, oh just smelled it he smelled it and so throughout this year every time I go back to check that camera and refresh that. I'd have that buck there within 24 hours hitting that again. Is that right? Yep. That's cool. Hitting the same rub over again. And I sprayed it on. I made like a mock scrape on the same tree. It was a little hemlock that he was rubbing. And made it underneath it. He'd be back in within 24 hours to hit that. That's no joke. That's pretty and, wild. And yeah. I, but I've, I've, I haven't had that before. But this, I mean, this was like an hourglass sign post rub. You could tell mm-hmm. this deer has been using this for years. That was his home yeah. You know, just one rub. Oh, yeah. This was his his spot, you know. Well, it's like your deer. I, when Greg was out in the in the spring, he 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 uh, he liked the spot, and I hung a camera there. There was a couple good rubs, and uh, we got your deer actually rubbing. It was a traditional rub that he rubbed yeah. yearly, you know. But I think there's there's maybe some signs, some stuff. But I think other times you just you can't really like a count like count on it it's just it just happened have you, uh, johnny have you noticed that if that buck ends up getting killed that them rubs quit sometimes you know I, yeah I've, I've seen that you know where i know there's a good buck and then uh whether i take it or somebody else i know takes a good buck they disappear. Out of there, then the next year that rub doesn't get mm-hmm. hit anymore but there's some that there's other you're right that and hit th- them, there's but. definitely areas that i see a buck gets harvested and i'll see uh rubs pop up from another buck but how he used the might be kind of a little bit different area because mm-hmm. he sees that terrain and that his own way and this is how he lives there yep. but when that other buck lived there it's the same trees every year yep. he lives here and then another buck moves in he might not rub as much he might rub over here a little bit he might still inhibit that well, area but they do you remember that spot me uh you and greg camped we did that scouting trip yeah. where we got all that snow remember all those rubs around oh, yeah. where we camped at and they were all old signpost rubs and i ran cameras in there the next year and i never picked up anything so they must have not must nothing have got big killed. and then those rubs were never freshened up again yeah so that buck must have got killed. I just you assuming. guys left too much scent there. That's what it was at campsite. <laughs> yeah, we put too, but too much scent down scared them away. Yeah, too much testosterone. But being talking, I remember those rubs. You could tell they were scarred for two or three years. Now, yeah. that's the spot I found shed season. These trees were scarred for a year or two, and then they were hit this year. And I put that camera. That's when the guy looked up in a tree, and I ain't got that buck on camera. About a half a mile away on a mountain, the biggest rub I ever found, uh, a 12-inch diameter tree, and in front of it was just dirt. Um, that buck just tore this maple up. It was, And I know that's the buck was making them rubs. Um, and I I don't even have him on camera. He's 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 a way above me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> he's there. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's there. But it's just intriguing how they... But I think uh, where he was making them rubs, there's just too much close to the road, too much activity. And I think that rub I found a half mile away, he was, it was just frustration. And there was a lot, now on that camera where that guy got up, got up in a tree, there was power does, there was acorns, there was rotten activity, 120s, 110s, yearlings. It was just like awesome. And this buck, you know, he's the king of the mountain. He put his sign there, but he's like, I got to go lay way out here on a mountain because there's too much human activity. He's just and he's mad he can't be there, you know, but uh, I think he destroyed that tree. He was like, man. So he's taking out anger because he couldn't 
to survive. That's what they're ba- basically there to survive. And he, if he would chase him does in there, he, he it's you know he's gonna his life would be in jeopardy. Yeah. So he just goes out on that. He's a way out on that mountain hiding. But uh, it's just <laughs> awesome chasing him, learning about him, and oh yeah, yeah. That all so, yeah. If it was uh, if it was by the book, it, it wouldn't be as fun. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, they always throw you for loop. You know, I you know I said I have all this camera and all this intel for next year, but come next year, it's all out it, the window. It, it might be all out the window. <laughs> yeah. Been down that road. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I. That's why I said, to Joe. We were talking. I was like, Joe, I just like scouting anymore. I think I think I'm the. the I work hard all summer at my job and scout, and then I think when I get that time off in November, sometimes I want to relax a little bit. I think it's uh, it's really it's tough to grind it out every day getting a tree and and uh like i said i didn't people say aren't you mad bo got that tea? i'm like no i'm not mad i i don't care he he deserves it whether it was one i was watching or he, he had a he had chances at his deer i mean it's he's uh he got the work ethic he work he just he does whatever it takes to you know and that's someone that deserves a deer yeah you don't mind taking somebody into your spots that puts i like the helping people that help themselves out he yep. don't mo never said john can you go take me somewhere he don't need me to get a deer you don't need me to get him a deer and it's like you know hey let's you know it's sometimes nice during gun season to get together and hunt with our people and yeah i mean it didn't really matter if i got that deer or not it was it was just fun hunting a different area and hunting with you know, buddies, someone, and everything yeah, else, like that, because all archery season we always hunt You're by ourselves your, yeah, and yeah. everything else, and that just makes it nice, you know. But the scouting is what I enjoy doing yeah. anymore. It's like, but like I said, if there was like some big monster buck, I, it'd be I'd maybe be a little different. But you, you may I'm, may push me out, may push me down the road <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> flatten your tire. <laughs> so, when did the history of this buck that I, I shot start? It all started right here in, in it did. the basement, it, didn't it? Yeah, I think uh, I found that spot in 16, and I said, I'm going to run some cameras, or I'll put a camera here. Ne- or I wanted to rifle hunt next year, so 17 rolled around, and um, it's like a basically a point of a mountain, uh, a hollow up one side and a hollow up the other side. They probably run a mile, them hollows, and they peter out, but... Um, near the point on the we'll say the upstream you know side i i uh, dropped the camera in in um 17 i don't know if i rifle hunted or whatever i i dropped the camera because i seen some decent rubs and so i never hunted it was rifle season i dropped the camera i seen some decent rubs and i haven't i didn't go back till 18 i left that camera for a year and i went in uh second or no what in 17 let me rewind that in 17 when i dropped that camera i went up to hollow and i got in them hemlocks where you seen them beds joe mm-hmm. remember you said that was a good spot in 17 i went up to hollow and i jumped a big buck it wasn't this one and uh he ran directly away from me down a hill probably 140 class and I'm trying to score him instead of like just shooting because he was directly away from me. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a shooter. Um, I took a <laughs> shot. So, anyways, that was 17. Had the camera, missed one um, in them hemlocks where Joe uh, pushed. We did two pushes for Bo's deer. So, the first push, um, Joe, I said there in that hemlocks, there's usually some sign, and he did see some, some buck uh, tracks. So that was 17. So then fast forward to 18, I went back in their third day of rifle and I was out on the point and there was a couple inches of snow and I just walked, eased down the point and I seen a, a buck bed and uh, it must have been before daylight. He went down across the hollow, um, the upstream hollow. Um, and on the other side of the hollow, there was some beach brush hemlocks. It was thick. And I followed his tracks. And didn't And, and he, this deer wasn't a huge body deer. And he was, it was pretty neat when you track deer, how he was looking. He, I think it was a spot that he didn't, since it was rifle season, he knew hunters were out there. I think it was a spot that he didn't inhibit 
most of the year, but he went in there when the pressure was on. So before daylight, he went down across the creek and he went up this little spring and he, you see him zigzagging around. That's usually when they're going to bed, but he was looking for a particular spot he wanted to lay. So anyways, I bumped him and I seen him run and I figured he's probably pushing 140. That was in 18 and he went back across the creek up the other hill and he headed up the hollow and he was in them hemlocks where Joe uh, seen him beds. And that was the only buck track I was on that morning. And I said, you know what? I missed that one last year in here because I was trying to, when he was running, instead of just pulling the trigger, I was trying to um, guess how big he was. Size him up? Yeah, like an idiot. He's running. I'm trying to guess if that's something I want to shoot. If that's 140, I'll shoot him. Like, oh, yeah, it is. But So I was getting in them hemlocks, and his tracks kind of headed down the hill. And you could see probably 100 yards in there. And he went down the hill. And I said to myself, the next deer I see, you know, I've got horns. I'm shooting because this is the only track. And I remember it was windy. There was a little bit of crunch to the snow. I only walked when the wind blew. But anyways, the deer head down the hill on like a 45 degree angle. And I started down on his tracks and I'm looking out ahead of me. There was a deer paw on the ground and I seen rack. I just pulled up the gun and smoked him. I said, oh, I got him. I went walking down there and there's like... A lot of ground shrinkage. I'm like, Whoa, <laughs> this ain't the deer. I jumped back here 400 <laughs> yards. But when I shot mine, there was one standing to the left about 40 feet away that ran. And so anyways, I shot mine. He was a two-year-old. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I went back up to the tracks of the deer I was tracking. And here he walked. He was the one standing beside my deer that I shot. <laughs> so I drug him up the mountain and I took my other buddy in there. I said, hey, that I jumped a good buck in here yesterday. I said, sit by my gut pile. I said, I missed one here last year, and I shot this one. I said, just sit by my gut pile. So I went out on that point again, and I dropped down in them blowdowns the next day, and I bumped him, and he went down across the creek and up in that thick shit again. So um, when I did that, I f when I went back in them blowdowns, I found my camera that I dropped in 17. You forgot all that is even there, didn't you? I don't you? know if I forgot or I just didn't know, you know, it was one of them things. I didn't have, I don't know if I, I didn't have Onyx. I just kind of like dropped you, it. You, on call, a, you called it a bonus cam when it you was, showed up. Is to that the, what yeah. I said? Yeah. 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 You're like, I found a bonus cam. It was, so it was there for a year. So I grabbed that camera like, all right. So anyways, he was living in that hollow. So I... I come over Bose. I come over here that night. I said, look at his camera. I said, it's been there for a year. So uh, he was on, he made it through rifle season. It's, well, naturally he did because I seen him in 18, but 17, I had nice pictures of him. He's probably in his 30 class animal. But uh, so, yeah, I come over and say, hey, this buck's still living up there. So that was 18. And uh, I think uh, maybe I dropped the camera there uh, later in 18 and I got him in 18 on that yeah, point. Yeah, pictures of him where you were setting up. Yeah, when, when we when set I up for that. I shot Yours. The buck. Yep. You were set up about 300. It was it? We ended up being about 300, 300 yards, yards apart, me. right on the point of that mountain. And right where you were sitting, there, yeah. where you had pictures of him, it was uh, December 30th in daylight. He was walking around that point. Yeah, Remember him with another, another buck. buck. Yeah. yeah. And I found a shed right there, too. But so, yeah, 18, I made it through. So fast forward to 19, um, I got pictures of him down low. Um, there were some oaks down low. And he he put some put, look a decent amount of size on in a nineteen, and uh, I never hunted there. I tagged out last year, and so when Greg Litzinger came out spring turkey, I said let's go up this hollow, let's shed hunt. I said there's a and and I showed him the one that's there. It was probably probably one hundred forty five pushing fifty maybe last year, and he found a rub. Um, and that hollow, the upstream hollow, and he said, man, I want to run a camera here. This actually, we can kill this deer here, da, da, da. So um, he couldn't come back out in the fall, like September. So I, I went and put a camera on that rub for him. And um, actually, Bo's deer was there October 9th, and then he was there on the 17th rubbing that rub. Yeah, uh, daylight, video. Too. Yeah, daylight. So, um, so the downstream hollow... Um, on the other side of the point had some acorns. So I had a cell cam set up over there. And when Greg come out in, um, 
November, I said, I said, that upstream hollow, it's, it's more brows, some blowdowns. I said, but that downstream hollow downstream, it has, it has some acorns. I'm getting a lot of bucks in there, you know, and there's a, there's that, that big ones in there. I didn't, and it was on that scrape. So anyways, he went up there. What was that about November 3rd, 4th? I can't remember. And he hit one. Um, and that's what we were talking about earlier. We tracked it, couldn't yep. find it. It took a step forward. And so, um, he ended up getting another one somewhere else. And, and, uh, I actually didn't get the cam the deer on camera since on that scrape since before Greg shot his. And that's why I kept call I called Greg. I was like, you sure you didn't shoot that 150 big long brows. No, I, I didn't. It wasn't. I, said, I, I ain't got no pictures on <laughs> where he's at. And like we said, it was on that scrape. It'd be lift. So fast forward, you know, rifle season, uh, the day before Bo got his, I was in upstream hollow and I picked that camera off at, um, off at rub and that buck was there 9th, October 9th, 17th. Then I walked around the point and a, and a big wide buck jumped up and he didn't have much points on his one shot. I didn't even shoot. And I went into the downstream hollow and I headed up in there and I moved my cell camera a little bit, grabbed another camera and I had a decent 10, but no pictures of the big one. So um, that night when I was at the camp with Bo and his dad, I I was talking to Bo and I said, you know, you've been doing a lot of stand, sitting, posting, by, you know. I said, you want to go put some drives on? I, got, I, I said, this hollow, there's some good bucks in it. I know there there might even be a big one. There was, anyways. I said, do you want to go drive tomorrow? He's like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. You know, I've been posting. You know? Yeah, we, we, I'd said, yeah, you're like, do you want to go drive for you? I'm like, yeah. I said, let's. Let's bounce back and forth. You put one on for me, I'll put one on for you, and we'll go back and forth. And all of a sudden, Mountain Man Joe's like, uh, you, you need a driver? I'm like, hell yeah, we need another driver. <laughs> I'm not doing anything tomorrow. I was hoping you got After I said that, I'm thinking, I hope they say uh -oh. no. I hope they say no. I, I, I wasn't planning on hunting, so I had a little bit, a little more to drink than I normally would if I was planning on hunting the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, man, 5 o'clock's going to come early. I think that was about... 11 11 30 yeah but we yeah we didn't get up that early though no well i, I got then, up at five i was, up, I at was five. up at five i mean i wasn't get a little <laughs> older you're ready but i them cameras i grabbed the day before had a couple bucks like out they were heading up in the hollow further up in about nine o'clock so i said i want to push them out of there i want to push them down the hollow so i said it'd be better maybe if we get out there or, about nine and you guys met me and we pushed the one hollow which is the upstream one had the blow downs and that's where i told bo i said i i took my i took my saddle my sticks and i climbed up in that tree so i could see see, it draw. see and then blow downs he yeah it was that, that's a big hollow that's yeah a big hollow. That's and a big i hollow. i think i think you can that hollow can definitely produce i mean after i did it once um i think i would change some things up well we had a little miscommunication with my eyesight and reading text yeah yeah, stuff. yeah yeah i thought you said drop down low and here you said you were dropping John, down low <laughs> he's got he's got no excuse he's got his he got a text message zoomed in. So. I've seen it. The letter's about four inches tall. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he had the one deer run down. Yeah, it had to. Well, that, uh, yeah. I, I, and I said I was going to drop low, and he thought I told him to drop low. Yeah, keep it going. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we didn't do any good. And it was a, I mean, just to, you know, it's kind of out of the way just to get set up on it. We took an hour and then I'm just to get up it, out I'm of it. I'm glad it didn't go good. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought that buck was going to be living in that, in that hollow, yeah. you know, where, um, but I'm sure there was one definitely. That probably was a 170 that I jumped that, there, didn't yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me you want to go over there tomorrow, try it. Hey, whatever. We can do it. But so, yeah, then <laughs> we got out and it took a while to get out of there. I said, that other hollow downstream you know, they both parallel. Well, we each we, were other. All, we almost decided not to do anything. We well, were I was leave. filling you guys out, and I, I mean, <laughs> well, it's, it was there's only three of us, you know, and the, these hollows, there's it's just a mountain top with two. They parallel each other. The hollow on this side and this side, and they, they're about a mile long. And so we did the one. I said we could do the other one. I said, I said we can maybe go out on a point of that mountain, and Joe, you can kind of do your magic. I don't know. I said. Drop it's up some to cameras, you, you know? do some scouting, do, do some scouting. Well, 
Yeah, you got I mean, a backpack full of cameras. I mean, <laughs> I I was I was optimistic more when we sat down than I was with the plan because like after doing that other hollow and realize how much land there is there between is. us and I mean one person that those deer could loop around him before he even knows what's going on. Oh yeah, and. But once, but if once you got, got a, I mean, if you got a driver like this, yeah. he ain't letting them get behind him. <laughs> no, I mean he's like a deer himself. Yeah, he's 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 playing defense. He's always blocking them, make sure they it can't come get out. Make whole flock of deer come out of there. Yeah, that that one mile drive, <laughs> that one mile drive was ten miles on my boots. Yeah, yeah. Joe said, it, down, "Man, down. that's a long way. It's about a mile." I was like, "Wait," uh, he said, "You want to shorten it up." No, you can handle it, <laughs> But the good thing was that. Like, well, there's just so much that can happen where them deer can sc- oh, escape man. before I, I thought, get them I to was you. Like, I said, well, the one good thing is out on that point, if if they want to run around the point to the next hollow, we could, that point was really open. I could see 250. Yeah. That was that well, helped us. Well, that was a perfect win for that drive. Oh, and, yeah. And it was yeah. all, yeah. Because it was, yeah. Was it, it was a northwest wind, so it was coming off. And where that deer was bed, I mean, makes sense from if you – think of how deer is supposed to bed you know from the standpoint of uh, off the points that with the, the wind yeah. coming on i mean everything was as perfect as it could be with it well i, I never seen him I, ne- I never seen him when i jumped him but i wasn't moving extremely fast and i really don't think he winded me i think he's he's seen me before i seen, seen him you heard yeah you I, th- um, I think he might have heard you yeah it could have been that too um i don't know i was pretty stealth I don't know. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> might it might have hurt Joe me. had to. It might have hurt me with Joe had to that, slap the deer in the butt to get him moving. It might it might have hurt me setting him. that camera up. <laughs> you know, yeah, I th- I think I think what happened was that deer was blind and deaf, so he walked up and he hit get it right going. Ass. Go on, yeah, go, actually, go. I, I I yeah, I mean, being you said that, Johnny, I I, I did yeah, I did see it bedded down. I walked up to it. Let's Grabbed go, it by the man. horn. I thought it was dead. Yeah. I was getting ready to, you know, here's a, here's a nice dead head. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it picked his head up. Ooh. So I said, oh, okay. I think, uh, oh. slapped him in the asses. Get moving. Yeah. And it started going. And I had I caught up to it again. Gave him another a couple smack. trees because he couldn't see. Yeah. Gave him another smack. Blind. <laughs> then when he started shooting, I had hit the ground because I, mean, I, was, I was like 10 feet behind it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but one of the things that, I thought it was interesting when we went off on that point where you were set up just over the edge from the top and you know it that that spot looks super good because you had that steep hill and then there was that slight bench that wrapped around and I'm like and there was a big rubs there that's where the rub, and that's where I had the picture yeah, of him the pictures in eight of last in 18 yeah, and 18 and I knew he worked around that point Well you've seen some deer I pushed some to you Yeah two, yeah two doe come up in a spike big old mature spike <laughs> sure it wasn't just the brow tines, Johnny. I was looking in here. He might have been. I mean, he might have might been, been wider than your scope. He might have been at one seventy. Yeah, he might have. He been. might have. <laughs> oh well. And, and you're like, you're like, you know, just go off that that point, a couple yeah, hundred yards. Up, yeah, out, couple, of, get out of sight. Out of sight. And I remember I was just trying to see where you're at, and I remember I go off the point and turn around, and I see Johnny sitting behind the tree, and his arms are waving. Go oh, farther. Yeah. Go farther. I didn't want to shoot you. Yeah, no, I know, and that's why I was looking back. I wanted to get out of sight, and then after I got out of sight of you, I was just going to sit down, but then I started looking, and the way this terrain laid, there was a couple mini benches that went down, and I, I realized I had a, I had a couple gaps where I couldn't see down over. I'm like, if I just drop a little lower, I can shoot uphill, but it's still not angled toward Johnny because I marked where you were at on Onyx, so I had that laid out. So I dropped down in a spot where... It wasn't great in any direction, but it was just this. You couldn't even really see it on a map. It was just a small yeah. little bench that came out of there, and that's that's where I sat. And I was kind of in a dip, and I was like, I don't know how great this is, but whatever. And I'm only thirty yards off this hemlock thicket that's off this yep. point. Yep. And then when my dad came around the came around the point there, and all of a sudden I just I was just I was ready the whole time. I never set my gun down. I was just felt just focused and all of a sudden i caught a glimpse of an antler just sneaking out of those hemlocks and i pulled up my gun and he walked right into the scope and i just i about died i was like oh my shoot him walking boat or sneaking i don't know i think he was uh he no i yeah he was he was sneaking he kept looking behind him and he he was he had just he had just stopped and i put it right 
it was right in front of his front shoulder. He was kind of he was quartering two real hard, almost straight on. And I, I shot him through there, the first shot, and he mule kicked him. He was dead on his feet. But before he even had a chance to fall, I had another one on him oh, and yeah. put him. I, I, I wasn't letting that deer That's go. Good. But and I, I let out a yell because I just couldn't hold it, hold it back. Just out of, and I'm like, oh, my dad's still putting a drive on. John might have a chance. I better shut up. He don't worry about himself. Yeah, I, I know. Selfish. I know, I know. But I was, I, I was know, so I excited. And then, so then. My dad comes over. I'm waving him over. You know, he he's tripping over himself when he sees it. He's like, yeah, "Oh, yeah, it was, yeah, he's it like, did you tell John?" I was like, "Not yet." So he, he calls you. He killed a giant. You go, "Is it the big nine? You knew exactly <laughs> yeah. what deer it was. Uh, it was fun. Yeah, that was a sight that uh, I, I I don't think I've ever seen one dead yeah. in the woods by anybody I've been hunting with. It you know at, at, at that large. That was, that was a, an incredible awesome. sight. Just a big frame for a nine point to be over 155 inches it just like is incredible yeah he's uh they're just amazing animals they don't come out of the woods often looking like that you don't I wish, see that i wish you know we we talked about it there when we were doing the field dressing and that and i i, I wish we would have backtracked just to see exactly where he yeah i jumped him you're right it would have been interesting to to, to to note, you know, what, what where was he exactly, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and how why so was he laying that. there? Yeah. And we we talked about it. Just we were yeah, in the we moment at that it. point. We're like, let's get him yeah, off we, the hill. Well, we wanted we got to go, beer to drink. We wanted to swim. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah. This is this is where I said, I'm gonna cut him up. We're gonna pack him out. And John, ah, we don't need to pack him out. Yeah, we you want to you want to sit around, home. look at a deer when you're drinking beer. Deer parts. You want to see that. You want to see the whole deer. You don't want to see. You know, just the head there at the end of the night after you pack out the meat. I'm like, well, I was like, all right, what what do you what are you thinking here, John? I I don't want to go up over that hill dragging this thing. You're like, well, we'll just go down across the creek. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just go down across the creek. Me and your dad will get the vehicle and we'll meet you around. You drag it down off the mountain and we'll go down to the creek and we'll cross it. So you guys go up. I trusted you and uh, we go down and I I get the deer down there and he. It was it was a pretty easy drag from the standpoint it was downhill, forty five that, degree angle downhill. Yeah, it was steep. That deer was pushing me half the time, and then it would get caught on stuff. And I'm trying not to ruin the cape and get him down to the crack. And you're there, and I'm like, oh my, this is bigger. Than yeah. So we right. went, me and Joe went up on a point, and way at the base of the point, not out on the point, but way in. That's where our vehicle was. It was a it was a hike, you know. Yeah, it was, it was a lot further than I thought. That's about as long as my drive was. It was yeah, it was probably a mile. Yeah. I bet you it was a mile. And then we drove around on the other side of the creek and from the creek to the road where we parked was three hundred yards and there was a hell of a Yeah. It's about and Bo's so- like I, I got nobody had waders. Bo said in the back of my truck I got them cheap waders yeah. that you lo- used. Those, those ones I took to Alaska, yeah. luckily I never needed them because they were brand new, first time across the creek leaked. Yeah. So I grabbed them out of the back, and we went running down, and Joe stood there, and I said, well, we could see Bo across the creek. I said, well, I'll put these things on over top of my boots, and as soon as I started, it, it's probably, how wide is that creek? Oh, 60 Christ. yards? It is more. Yeah. yeah I yeah. bet it was close to 70, 75 yards across. Yeah. And I honestly, I thought you were going to get about 10, 20 yards into it and have to turn back because it just kept on It was fast. Deeper. Well, you're telling me it's only up to, but it's only going to be up to your knees. <laughs> Pretty soon you're up to your crotch and yeah. you're pulling Hold them up. them waders up. Yeah. Just holding it. They're like, they're like garbage bags. Yeah. Feet. <laughs> yeah. So my, my, my right foot's pretty wet. So I get over it and I, I, Bo was, he was probably 50 feet from the creek. I said, where's the deer? Uh, the deer was 50 foot from the creek, so he got him over there, and I said, give me a mouth drag. He said, don't don't drop drop him. I said, because uh, I, I had to wait. I said, I'll, I'll drag him. I said, Bo, I ain't going to drop him. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was worried about me losing. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go out well, there. Well, I don't know how you would have done that and held your waders up at the same time. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So but- I seen Bo shaking. He had adrenaline because he's still on cloud nine. I said, why don't you drag him across the creek? Yeah. So I said, give me your pack and uh, get going. And I swear he hovered across that damn water. I'm like, slow down, Bo. <laughs> he took that deer and he ran. <laughs> yeah, well, I couldn't feel my legs at all. So, like, you guys were asking me if I was slipping on the bottom. I have no idea. It was just, it was so cold going across there. 
And but the deer floated pretty good. Actually, it wouldn't have if you wouldn't yelled across to me, Dad. You're like flipping over, flipping through the other way. I was gonna, I was wasn't thinking. That I would have had the open body cavity. Yeah, towards I didn't the current. think either. Yeah, <laughs> and then Joe's uh, a little older and wiser. He's like flip it over so the water don't fill. Well, he started and here done that. He started sinking towards the end though. Yeah, once but once we got him across, um, then the bank, the banks. Oh man, I don't know. What was that six foot? Five oh foot. yeah, just to get out of the river. Yeah, just to get like straight well, up out of the creek. Yeah, the, the <laughs> creek. Yeah, we we're trying to get him out of that creek, and uh, so you're holding on to me, Dad, pulling me up. My legs are so cold they won't even work. And then finally, Johnny, you got on the ass end of the deer, push, picked yeah. up, and we pulled, him, and it was uh, that it, was awesome. And I always wanted to shoot one across the creek, and drag it like and haul it across the creek, and. uh Fortunately, it it happened with a big buck. Yeah, we got was, some good film of it. That's that's, I mean, that's like, that's pretty wild. Yeah, that's just that was as cool as it. That was one of the coolest. I mean, at the time it kind of sucked, but that's cool to talk about. I mean, that's think a, about it. That being ingrained in your head forever, you know. Oh yeah, pulling that thing across there it was. I just wish my phone wasn't dead. Yeah. I wanted to film you guys coming across, but my phone's dead. And then I'm yelling at you guys, I can't even dial 911 if you need it. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 you missed the part where I paracorded the deer to my- You had to tie. Oh, yeah. I tied, my dad's yelling, tie the deer to your belt. Yeah. So I tied it to my belt loop. I was like, Bo, you're not going to drop that thing. There's no, if that thing went under and you went under, he'd be, you'd be bear hugging it going down. <laughs> you'd be holding your breath until you popped up again. You'd still be latched onto it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I wouldn't let him go. No. But I, t- I tied what well, I saw um the outdoor channel reposted that video on Instagram. Someone commented I go, that's the first time I saw a deer on a stringer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's cracking up. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was pretty funny. But yeah, then we got him got him back to camp. I got a quick shower, changed my clothes a little bit, and and Michael Paladino, um, buddy that was up in Alaska with me, he killed an awesome eight one, point, yeah. real wide, twenty one inch wide eight point that morning. So I was second time this year. Him and I doubled up essentially in the day, and we had the beers flowing at camp pretty good. Oh yeah, I didn't make it out of camp at night. <laughs> you stayed there? Oh yeah. Uh, did you? Yeah, <laughs> I had a twenty minute drive. Your uncle said it's pretty icy out. You just oh, stay yeah. here. Well, I like, told you to come over here too. But. Yeah, Joe said come over. Yeah, we were probably there to about one. Yeah, we were, yeah. But uh, that's <laughs> that's what it's all about. Oh, it, that was, that was so much fun that night and uh, hanging out, talking about it, and busting on each other. It was. I just like. Them big bucks, you just keep looking at them. Like, you can't, like, even how long we were in the woods. We were probably up there an hour and a half before oh, yeah. we even started dragging it, taking pictures. Because it's not the way they live their lives. They're different than other yearlings, does, and they're different animals to make it through and to carry that headgear and hide that headgear. They're, like, the you know, bigger bodies and bigger racks, and they have to, to survive. And they're total survivalists to, to get one. Yeah, you get them on cameras all the time, but actually bring one out of the oh, yeah. public land. And they look so it's much like bigger. That. It's, just, it's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Trail camera pictures made them look big, but not yeah. that big. So you took them to the tax or the... Yeah, tax term. He said he was maybe nine. He said he figured by looking at the teeth and everything else, he figured nine and a half to ten and a half years old, which... From what you're thinking from your picture, you think he might have been seven. I was thinking probably seven. Yeah. Because in 17, I figured he was. Well, I'm going to send out the four. teeth and we'll get an exact yeah, number. Yeah, 17 plus four, three or four, seven. I'd say seven. Yeah. Either way, he's an old deer. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a king of the mountain there. That was. Yeah, it, that's, that's just that's incredible. I mean, his face, I, I took him to work the next day after. Uh, after we took skinned it out and everything, and and had I just had the hide on because I was going to take it to the taxidermist, and some guys were out all day. You saw people opening the cap of my truck, looking in my bed, checking it because I told people that that I had it out there, looking at it. And everyone's comment was his face was so gray. He had his forehead was brown, and everything else was almost like a white gray, kind of like my dad's beard. 
You know? <laughs> yeah. All the way down. And he's saying he was an old man. I'm the saying deer. The deer. Good job. The deer. <laughs> <laughs> I think Joe did pretty good in them mountains, boys. That's why he called him Mountain Man Joe. Yeah, that's why. I don't, don't phase him. Well, if you put it in, uh, if deer lives are like dog lives, uh, yeah, that deer, he could be around all you know, my age. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's true. That was, uh, yeah, we'll see how old he was. I, I could be wrong. He, but he wasn't a huge body deer. We were just looking at the pictures from eighteen. I said, look how long below his hams, how long his legs are. Yeah, you know, he just he wasn't. That's why a lot of times, just people judge deer by their body. They tell you the age they are. I don't or the antlers. It's you, you don't you don't. I mean, each one could be a little bit different. You know. Yeah, they're all looks like you got big people, you got little people, you got fat people, you got skinny people. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. So. Yeah. But it's that's that's I'm glad you got it, Bo. Yeah, I pre- you deserve I, it. I, I mean, appreciate he, it. He tastes good too. Oh man, yeah, we had dinner tonight. Bo's mom cooked. She did a hell of a oh, meal. Mine. On yeah. that tra- yeah. That was good. Oof. Yeah, that was extremely good. Makes it all worth it, that's for sure. Now we're gonna go out and kill you a deer tomorrow. Yeah, we got I got a couple spots that uh I never pushed. Maybe we'll hit that that upstream hollow. Maybe we'll maybe I'll go get out on that point. I know there's deer in there and yeah. I know no one's been in there. What time what time you want me to be at camp tomorrow? What time are the dogs gotta show up? Uh, seven seven thirty. Is that that works? Yeah. Push like I said. I gotta I'm gonna try to head home at noon. So maybe we'll probably be tagged out about nine or so. <laughs> well, I tell the old lady. I said I'm probably gonna leave at noon unless I get the big old B. Then <laughs> you might not see me. Yeah, that'd be the next day. <laughs> yeah, next day at noon. <laughs> yeah, that's do a little celebration. Story. Another cell. Yeah. Hey, that'd be all right. Yeah, I'd I'd be totally fine with that. That's what's nice about like. You know, some of them deer they shoot out in the Midwest, they, you know, on private land. And that just doesn't mean much to me when you bring in 140, 150. It's like, that's a good deer. But when we bring one out of these big forest bucks and and uh, been there for all those years and looted, they don't get away because they're, you know, people let them. They just, they're that good. And when you bring them out, it's just, it makes it 10 times better. I mean, so much better. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, a that was, satisfying feeling. That, that was a great hunt for sure. Yeah, yeah, that was cool to see the plan work out, and I, it, you know, it all happened the way it was supposed to. I had said before, but I'd, I'd missed a buck the week before coming across. I'm like, you know, why? Why is this happening? Why am I having all? You know, it felt I, I was I was playing the poor me thing there for about an hour. You know, just why, like, why, why me? me? Why am I doing this? And well, it all ended up. Yeah, it worked, worked out right. I mean, you just gotta keep trying. You keep, you get down on yourself, but you just gotta keep grinding, keep yep. going, and keep trying and do everything, and it'll eventually pay off. It might be a lot of mishaps or misses or whatever, but eventually it's gonna happen. I like to to give myself about an hour or two to throw myself a pity party every once in a while, and then I just I gotta get over it. Gotta get over it and move on. But you, I mean, you put yourself in in front of deer this year, and yeah, I think you yourself pressure yourself a lot to, you know, perform, and and that's that's you know, um, that it makes it me, that much. It drives me nuts. Well, last thing I'm going to say is when we were talking about cameras and and like how my dad was talking about some of the areas he can only see 18 yards or so, but when I had Justin out here filming, I was hunting that specific buck, and. I overanalyzed things to a point of almost a fault. I was planning on sitting in a stand. I'm like, well, no, the way this wind direction is going and this, I started running all these things through my head. I'm like, no, I'm going to go across the creek 120 yards and sit in this tree. So my camera gets me and Justin walking through in the dark. We sat all day, never saw a deer, bummed out. On the way out, I didn't even check that camera. I don't want to know what was here all day. Yeah, yeah. I'm leaving. Well, I come back in rifle season and check it. And that, there. that big deer that I was hunting that I had at 15 yards of full draw was there at 8.37 a.m., 120 yards from the tree we were sitting in. We never saw a deer all day. He's sitting there flexing. You can see the tree in the background that I would normally, that I had sat in that year. Yeah. And I obviously wasn't in the tree. So it's like, it's one of those things that I felt like I was continually just getting beat down by close calls 
and then it eventually. I know sometimes out. I uh, do so much scouting. I think this year I was thinking about it, do much scouting that I put myself in the right spot, and when I don't see them or don't have any luck, it's kind of like I start second guessing and and like uh, thinking differently you know yeah. when, when you did all the scout and you know you need to be there yeah but uh and you, you th- even tell yourself then because you're clear-minded you're like i i if i sit here for three or four days i'm gonna do good exactly but when it comes down to having to sit there for three or four that's, days that's mentally like, that, yeah. that's tough yeah, after really, a, whole, a whole day sit and not seeing the deer it's like yeah, i'm not coming back here tomorrow. i'm not going it, well meanwhile all, all, all summer whenever you did your scouting this is a place to be and then you get in and i think i do that a lot uh I'll get into a spot and I I think I just like, I do that. It's like, oh man, maybe he's over there and you start, you know what I mean? He could, well, he could be, and sometimes during a rut, they are kind of, it's a crazy time of year where they could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. But, um, I think when I expect, sometimes I get in a spot, I expect to see deer. And then when I don't, that really screws me up. So sometimes I'll just go off the grid, off grid and go find a spot that, Maybe I'm not running cameras. I just know it's a good spot, and I could sit there because I don't expect to see anything. Yeah, you know what I mean. You it's have like more hope. Yeah, there's there's like uh, this spot. He that deer. He should be here in a day or so. You don't see him, and 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 you're expecting to see him, and then sometimes I'll just kind of go. I call it going off grid. It's like a spot that you've scouted in the past. You know it's a good spot. You don't got cameras, and then I just plop there and I can relax because I don't expect. If I don't see nothing all day, I'm just going to sit back and relax and enjoy the day. <laughs> but when I'm hunting that buck, and that's what kind of, I think that's what messes me up, that I expect to see him. And then it really screws well, yeah. you up. But if I just go to a random spot, I'm like, oh, this is cool. I can yeah. watch and you, the day. You're overthinking it. And all, and in reality, that deer was just, he was tired from the night. He's like, ah, I don't think I'm going to get up today. Yeah, I'm just going to take a little break. I've been rotting all night. <laughs> He's probably right up on a hill. And so I actually, that big eight I had close to me, um, <laughs> November 2nd, when it snowed, I knew he was there. I kind of knew where he was bedding. Um, he was just uphill for me. There's a little bit of some thick shit. I said, I, I think that's where he's bedding because he came from air and my camera got him coming from air. So the night Greg shot his deer, I wanted to double up like we did last year. So I said, I'm going back to where I seen him. I gave him a few days, whether he smelled me or what. And I got below that thick stuff and the thermals were coming downhill. I said, I think he's up in that thick stuff. So I got up in a tree, right? And I started second. I said, I want to get a little closer to that thick stuff. So I went across the hill, maybe 75 yards. So I was right below that thick stuff, you know? And uh, I got up in a tree there. He come out of that thick stuff. I'm like, oh, here he comes. Come, he come down toward me. Then he turned, and he went over to where I was. <laughs> Not saying he walked by me, but then I seen the flash of his horns. I said, "There's that big eight. And I said, "Why didn't I?" I said, "I know he was laying up in that thick stuff." I said, "In the thermals, he was above me." I said, "Why didn't I?" I you overanalyze. I said, "Because there were some scrapes down low. Maybe he's, you know, I didn't want him to win me." I said, "Why didn't I just go up?" sneak up another uphill up toward that thick stuff and but uh the tree i was in 75 yards away i don't know i i was thinking i said man i could have shot him probably there oh yeah you know what i mean but it's uh it's a big game it's a game really and yeah a fun game yeah. it is definitely yeah it's uh wears you out but at the same time wouldn't change it at all i think it's what keeps me young maybe i don't know because like young um, this is between me and Joe. I mean, you're uh, out, get some uh, exercise. I agree. I agree. I think it keeps me young. Well, yeah. I mean, scouting, hunting, climbing trees, dragging deer, hiking all these, mi- that, it's healthy. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'd agree. I call going, I tell the old lady I'm going grocery shopping. <laughs> for a couple weeks. Haven't, haven't found a good sale yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> no good sale. Best deal. I'm looking for the best deal. Is that what you tell her? <laughs> yeah. Find a good deals. Oh, well, let's let's kill one tomorrow. What do you think? Oh, that'd be awesome. I have bro. a good feeling yeah. about it. I think you're going to do well. Yeah. Good. We got a good team here. Yeah. Well, again, thank you, Johnny, for being so generous and and inviting me to hunt with you. And, and thanks to the dog, my dad. 
Yeah, over well, here for yeah, no you know, problem, bro. You for the last it. for the last twenty eight years, he's been carrying me. So why not? Why, why stop now? Another year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh anyways thanks guys for coming on we're gonna end this here hopefully by the time this comes out on tuesday you got a buck down and yeah that'd be good that'd be cool awesome bro all right thank you very much thanks so much for listening to this episode of east meets west hunt with your host bo martonic for more great content and to stay up to date visit east meets west hunt.com facebook at east meets west outdoors and instagram at east meets west hunt if you enjoyed today's episode please review and subscribe and we'll catch you next time